When you imagine a troll, you might think of a colorful, fun-loving, magical creature. Or perhaps you think about a mean and even angry monster who lurks in the shadows of a castle or who hides under a bridge, lying in wait to ambush those who pass. Or perhaps you think about yourself. Trolls are more than fictional characters in storybooks and movies. Today, trolls are found in chat rooms and community forums. They plague the comment sections of news stories, and they appear in social media feeds. They lurk online, waiting to ambush unsuspecting visitors with their cruel comments, off-topic remarks, and condescending statements. Essentially, trolls are the villains of the internet and they will say anything to make someone else have a bad day. Of course, after publishing research about internet trolls, my co-authors and I got a lot of feedback. Yes, we were trolled. But there was one comment that caught my attention. It came from a person who I'll call Karen. <laughs> this statement said, quote, trolling is not pointless. If done properly, its purpose is to satirize and expose people's foolish views in front of an online audience, unquote. While I don't profess to know everything about internet trolls, I do know Karen is right about one thing. This is how many trolls perceive themselves and the value they provide to online communities, and our research confirms it. Trolls may not necessarily consider themselves the villains of the internet, Many believe trolling plays a functional role in online communities, but their motives are not altruistic. Trolls are more concerned about themselves and having a great time online. They don't care about other people and creating a positive online environment for others. This becomes evident when looking at the three personality traits of internet trolls. The first personality trait of internet trolls is psychopathy. Like the Grinch who stole Christmas and had a heart that was two sizes too small. Trolls can be cold and unfeeling. Their lack of empathy towards others means they don't feel bad for making heartless comments. When a 14-year-old girl went online seeking support for her depression and eczema, trolls attacked. They told her to drink bleach, get cancer, and die. The impact of these words influenced a young girl to take her own life. The second personality trait trolls have in common is narcissism. Trolls need to feed their ego and self-esteem. In fact, they gorge themselves in attention and admiration from others. But to be clear, just because I post a lot of pictures of myself on social media or I share all of my good news online, does not make me narcissistic. Narcissists make downward social comparisons with others. They degrade and even shame others because they think their ideas are better and more important than the ideas of other people. The third personality trait trolls have in common is Machiavellianism. Trolls are like the villain in the fairy tale Cinderella. Like the wicked stepmother who was shrewd and tried to manipulate the prince into marrying her daughters, trolls can be cunning and manipulative. They don't have a problem deceiving other people in an effort to get what they want, and they do it all for a good laugh at the expense of others. The storybooks and movies that portray hangry trolls lurking in the shadows looking for cunning ways to feed their desires are not far off. But trolls are more than heartless, selfish, and shrewd. Trolls like seeing others suffer. Not only do they possess the dark triad personality traits I've just discussed, they also possess schadenfreude, which means they like seeing the misfortune of others. They get pleasure from deliberately provoking others just to get a response. They want to make people angry and upset, so they cast out inflammatory and offensive remarks and even say things they don't believe 
in an effort to reel people in and get a reaction. They want to make people feel uncomfortable and see them squirm. But really, trolls are cowards with a bark that is far bigger than their bite. It was at the end of the 20th century when Cindy Lauper's song announced the world, girls just want to have fun. At the time of this 1983 smash hit, rotary dial phones were a thing. We relied on letters to communicate with friends and family. Decades later, we carry our phones in our pocket, we announce our friends on social media, and we found that online, it's trolls who just want to have fun. But trolls just want to have fun at the expense of others. Think about the teenager who wanted an extra day off school. Due to the veil of anonymity provided by the internet and the thought of zero repercussions, a teenager made empty threats of violence online that were vague enough to put high schools across the country on alert. All because a teenager just wanted to have fun, parents were left wondering, will my kids come home safe? Then there's the sports fan who was triggered by a call made by a college basketball referee. Who else would go online to tell a referee he can hang himself, shoot himself in the head, or die in a fire? Only a troll. Believe me, I am well aware when this talk is over, trolls will poke fun of what I said and how I spoke. They will cast their virtual stones and volley their virtual tomatoes. While it's okay to go online and express an opinion or point of view, being outspoken does not make someone a troll. But how we express ourselves and the intention behind our words can make us a troll. Although I painted a picture of trolls being villains of the internet, we all have a tendency to act like trolls. Because we don't have to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe or face-to-face -face with the people we interact with online, it's easy to be rude, heartless, or post self-serving comments. I often think of the news reporter who interviewed me about my research on internet trolls. At the end of the interview, he admitted to letting his inner troll out when responding to online comments. But trolls, like the people they interact with online, are human. They're not mean and ugly monsters. They're people who hide behind a screen and say mean and ugly things. Understanding what drives internet trolls is like revealing the inner workings of a magic show. Once you know how the magic trick works, the magic disappears. But if you're like me, you may have wondered, is there a remedy for combating the contention and divisiveness that we see online? The answer is, don't feed the trolls. When it's not clear how to respond to others online, or our response is not likely to be compassionate, the best response we can give is no response at all. Instead of being mean, heartless, and shrewd, or looking for ways to expose the flaws of others, we need to bring humanity to our conversations and treat others with love and respect. In an online environment where it may seem anything goes, it's important to remember words have power Words can hurt, and words can heal. So in this world, where we can literally say anything, may we have the courage to be compassionate and kind. Thank you.